without self-respect, its flag serving only to ornament shopping bags or to decorate the T-shirts of foreign tourists, the England of yesterday. It all seems very far away, like a half-forgotten bad dream. With your help, your energy, your vision, we have built the foundations. An England greater and nobler than any society has ever conceived possible. That's what we will now build on these sure foundations. In mutual trust, in mutual respect, let us, now the way ahead is clear, forget all that ever divided us. Now is the age of achievement. That broadcast by Sir Timothy Hobson was recorded. It was a mixture of truth, half-truth, platitudes and lies. This is Quamby. Ask what really happened to Hollis. Go on asking until you get the truth. Ask where the Queen is. Ask why Parliament... <laughs> Yes. Oh, it's you. Yes, indeed, I heard it. I agree. We must, yes. Well, get hold of the Lord Mayor, will you? Tell him I'm ill or something. Williams, I've changed my mind. We're going back to London. I'm sorry about the Lord Mayor of Leeds. You've arranged it on? I didn't say you were ill. That gives the wrong impression. Leaders of Great England are immune to the ills that normal flesh is heir to. Yes, quite. You have the transcript of the broadcast. My own or the other one. <laughs> the main point is this word, Quamby. Oh, that could stand for anything, somebody's name. An unlikely name. And he'd be a very stupid man who'd risk his life running an illegal opposition under his own name. All opposition is illegal. No. Opposition through the existing structure, the presentation of new ideas, that's not illegal. Only opposition outside the structure. We must re-establish a legal opposition. We're pledged to it, in time. But this sort of thing doesn't help progress. Retards it. Well, what do you suggest we do? It's hardly my place to initiate action. That has never hindered you. <laughs> well, I have only two suggestions. The first is this business must never be referred to officially. Anyone who happened to hear the broadcast is, well, he's unlikely to discuss it too widely. You mean people are scared? Reserved? The English have always been reserved. And your other suggestion? There's a man called Gibb. He's the head of the special branch of the Guardian. Hmm? I didn't even know the Guardians had a special branch. Oh, it's been operating all the time, but of course... Specially. Yeah. Well, what about this Gibb? Well, I would suggest that he's put in charge of the investigation. I'm trying to disband the Guardians, not increase their power. Nevertheless, sir, I think this comes very much into their field. Have you ever considered the possibility that the division between ends and means is meaningless, that means determine ends? Oh, I've never been one for metaphysics. No. No, I suppose you haven't. Oh, all right, get your gib. I provisionally arranged that he should meet us this evening. Oh, you have, have you? 9.30. Hmm. Well, I missed um, the Lord Mayor of Leeds. I also missed a banquet. I suppose the leaders of Great England are allowed human appetites like hunger. Hmm? Of course, sir. <laughs> well, I'll try and get something to eat. And the mushrooms and the marigolds and the mandelwurzels all stood under the big letter M. But silly old Mustard didn't know where he should stand because he couldn't read. But we can read, can't we, children? Yes, we all bloody can. And when the judges came along, there was Mustard all alone 
and nobody took any notice of him. Mustard, mustard, silly old mustard, growing so high. Mustard, mustard, how we all love him and wave him goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, children. From mustard. And goodbye from me. The time is now 1.45, time for the lunchtime news. Your usual ration of lies. This is Quamby. Ask how many prisoners... <laughs> You are exactly on time, as always. Is this Gibb? Commander George Winston Gibb, OBE, Commandant of the Special Branch of the Guardians of the Realm. And who, may I ask, is... Uh... Michael Dace. Uh, Sir Michael Cahoon St. John Cavendish Dace, 14th Baronet, BC, KCB, CMG, DSO, Dusitan. Rather more to the point, I used to run, uh, without any great success, our intelligence services. MI5? That was part of it. Mm. But that's all ancient history. Now we have the Guardians. I never heard of you. The post wasn't advertised, and it was some time ago. And Sir Michael resigned when we came to power. Oh. Could one ask why? One can always ask. Have you had a security check? No idea, I suppose I must have. I know you have. Ages ago, of course, when I was still involved in these things. May one ask why Sir Michael is here? Mm -hmm. Well, you suggested we got experts in, and I agreed. You happen to know Commander Gibb, I happen to know Sir Michael. Right. <clears throat> so what do you suggest we do? I'm so out of touch. Has been. I was relying on you to have the ideas. Anyone caught listening to these broadcasts? There's been another one, by the way. True. There was one uh, on the radio this afternoon in the middle of a pop concert. Oh, you heard it? No, I don't listen to pop concerts as it happens, but one has one's contacts. Anyone caught listening to these broadcasts must be arrested. That might be rather difficult. Second, we must find a way to catch them broadcasting. Well? Oh, I'm sorry, I hadn't realised I was expected to comment. So I agree entirely, we must catch them broadcasting. If we can find their transmitter, we can find them. Yes, to broadcast they would need a transmitter. But as I'm sure you're aware, one can send messages to the moon nowadays using equipment the size of this. So if we all go around looking for gigantic radio masts, we'll be wasting our time. I presume you're already recording everything that goes out on television and sound radio. No, but... Well, you uh... damn well should be. And of course you'll be using the usual triangulation methods to trace these transmitters. Not yet, no, we've been considering... If by any chance the Guardians are not fully cognizant with these really rather... Elementary aspects of counter-espionage. I dare say I can drag a few old grey beards out of retirement who could teach you. We have been raised to do a job. But it doesn't appear you're very good at it, does it? Oh, I think a record of the Guardians is known to everyone. That's what I meant. Oh, I have the greatest respect for the Guardians as, say, uh, breakers up of peaceful protest marches. But when it comes to rather more sophisticated types of protest, perhaps one needs rather more sophisticated men? Approaches. Since the Guardians were created, the number of convictions for non-political offences has doubled. We know what we're doing. I'm sure you do. I just wonder if you know what you ought to be doing, in this instance, I mean. And you are going to tell us? Not unless I'm invited, no. I'm inviting you. Not Prime Minister. As Prime Minister, I'm automatically involved with security. And at the moment, as you know, I happen to be Home Secretary. It was a perfectly I'm adequate way. I'm inviting Sir Michael to tell you all what to do. Thank you. Perhaps, Mr Norman, you'd leave us. What do you mean? Security. You know how it is. Well, I happen to be a senior officer in the government. Where security is concerned, I've always found it helpful if as few people as possible were involved in any one activity, and that they, in their turn, should know as little as possible about what they were doing or why. So, if you would be kind enough to leave us. First, let me make it quite clear that you are not the person I would myself choose to have involved in this type of affair. Please don't interrupt. Nor would I have your guardians involved in any way. But it seems that I must work with such material as is available to me. 
I assume you know nothing about the way intelligence operates. Who do you think is responsible for I said intelligence, not repression. We will start from the very beginning. An efficient counterintelligence intelligence organization, organization not be should not be seen to be at work at all, unless and until it is in the interest of that organization that it is seen to be effective. You got that? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I don't mind telling you that you're not the lot I'd automatically choose, but uh, I've got to work with what I've got. Now, your job, you in this room, is to find out who is broadcasting these seditious messages and where from. Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the first message was broadcast three days ago. In those three days, there have been a total of 29. Some of these were drowned after only a second or two. One stopped in the middle of a transmission. Now, if we knew why that was, we'd be halfway there to finding how these broadcasts are being made. Now, get this. If the Guardians can't stop open sedition being broadcast on the radio and television sets of this country, we will be a laughing stock. Here are your orders. You know something? Tell me. Well, this Quamby, whatever it is, I get sent transcripts of their broadcasts. And I? Being the only man in Britain who has neither a radio nor a television, nor wants either, I must be the only one who doesn't receive the broadcast direct. Mm. These questions they ask. Mm? The questions. They are so often the questions I ask. And you don't get a reply either. No. It's more brandy. Please. It's uh, part of one's death wish, of course. And? If one drinks enough, one gets cirrhosis of the liver. <laughs> no, I've never really hoped for that. I happen to have too good a palate to want to go on drinking indiscriminately. But uh, cigarettes? I'm always terribly encouraged by the reports of how many minutes each cigarette is taking off my life. <laughs> well, is anyone any further on? I managed to find a few old hands who taught some of the more literate guardians the basic elements of radio direction finding. Reports keep coming in, but either the guardians didn't really understand what they were told, or... Or what? There's a factor I haven't allowed for. sake. But would you shut up clicking your bloody finger? It's just something to do. You're mad listening to pop all day and not doing anything. What's on your station then? Uh, it's a talk on beekeeping. Yeah. Educational. Anyway, they never broadcast on this wavelength. The only kind of audience they get, it wouldn't be worth it. They're on. This is Quarmby. When we are to have freedom okay, of the 141. press, it was promised for last year. Strength three, 143. Ask how many political Weaker. prisoners there 142. are in rehabilitation centers. 142.5. Ask three why again. the wages... What time was that? Uh, 14, 22 hours, 7 seconds. Operation up with Charlie. Yep. Another one timed 14, 22 hours, 7 seconds. Yep. Bearing 1425, strength 3. OK. Well, at least they kept them running long enough for us to get a bearing. Well, it's orders, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know that voice? The deep one. I hear that in my bloody sleep now. This is Quornby. This is Quornby.
Hornby. Yeah, that's not bad. Sure it's not you all the time? That's what they tell me. A total of 72 fixed and 124 mobile tracking posts. I gather they're mostly those vans that are used to trace people who haven't paid their television licenses. It's a bright idea. They thought that too. I had the heart to tell them we'd use those vans for intelligence long before half the G's were born. Mm -hmm. I wonder what effect these broadcasts are having. Mm. I told Gibb that in the last war we had a special intelligence unit in Germany whose sole job was to report on the subject matter of German conversations. I don't think he believed me. Well, how do you feel about it? About what? The work that you're doing. I suppose it's pleasant to be doing something again. You never married, did you? No. I was going to once when I was very junior in the service. What happened? She was in the service too. The Germans got her. I'm sorry. Why do you ask? Oh, it's only that I... Well, as I get older, I get more and more lonely. <laughs> Wondering if you did. Oh, yes. It's not as though with my background one can have reunions of old comrades. We do meet, of course, but we don't reminisce very much. We spent all our lives reading the official secrets act instead of the Bible, and it's hard to break a habit. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I've got Christopher, my son. The last time I saw him, he was still at prep school. Yeah. And you know, he makes me feel more lonely rather than less. Young people nowadays, they're so hard. Well, no, not hard exactly, but um, self-contained. Yes. Could I have some more brandy? Hmm? Oh, yes, of course. All right, I'll help myself. Actually, this business of loneliness... Yes? I was going to ask, I'd, I'd like a secretary, an assistant. I don't have anyone you want. Well, I don't really want a secretary, not as such. I, I want someone oh. to talk to. Ah, uh -huh. I understand. Thank you. I was thinking of someone outside. Mm -hmm. My goddaughter, Eleanor Benedict. Hello. Yes. It's your godfather. It's wonderful to hear you, too. Look, um, would you like a job? No, with me, part-time. Oh, just making encouraging clucking noises and saying how clever I am. That's it. Well, if you're not doing it at the moment... Then she can look after the children. Splendid. No, uh, get a taxi and come round here. 10 Downing Street. Any policeman will tell you where it is. Fine. See you. Bye. <laughs> Monday, come, come to, work to work five, five minutes, minutes late. late. Show, Show your strength by, by coming, coming to work five, five minutes, minutes later. later. Have, Have your, your excuses, excuses ready, ready, but... is protest day. Say your bus was late, as it will be. Oversleep. Miss your train. Your car won't start. Whatever your job, clock in five minutes later. Have you left your husband for good? I don't know. Meaning you probably haven't. Randy, all right? 
of mine. I like the way it's classified secret. It's an old trick. When I was in Moscow, some idiot defecting Russian gave me a whole lot of photostats of a space satellite he was working on. Of course, I realised the KGB would know about it and search my room. Water or neat? Neat, please. Quite right. So I <clears throat> stuck the photostats to the wall, did a rather hasty job putting wallpaper over them, then marked secret every damn thing I could lay my hands on. They were so busy searching through my secret underwear, they never looked at the wall. Cheers. Cheers. Now tell me why you left, Frank. It was just something that happened. I'm listening. I thought he was having an affair, so I left him. And was he? No. You do realise that I can't employ anybody, even a goddaughter, that I don't know about. Then why all the questions? You've got all those reports on the broadcast? Mm-hmm. Where shall I put them? Go oh, anywhere. I don't want them. I'll get my own copies. I just had to keep you occupied. While you were checking up on me? Yes. Now we can start work. There's a meeting tomorrow. I have some notes in my head. I want you to take them down, type them out. One carbon, destroy the carbon paper. Then at the meeting, it's at number 10 again. Read out the ones I tell you to, no? Yes. You'll find paper and pencils in the box behind you, marked stamps. I've made arrangements to get figures for workers in every major industry who are late for work on Monday. It should be quite a list. What do you propose to do with it? Well, follow it up. How? Arrest the ringleaders. But let us suppose that, say, nine million people are late. They'd better not be. Even five million. Are all five million of them ringleaders? They'd all have excellent excuses. They've been told to prepare them, and they've had enough time. But uh, have you come to any conclusions yet? I mean, about how the broadcasts are being made? Not, not really, no. That's why I suggested this meeting of all the talents. Ah. Well, let's start with Commander Gibb. Well, I've prepared this map, and these posts are manned 24 hours a day. Yes, I think you misunderstood me. I didn't ask for your timetable. I asked for your conclusions. Well, I think it's a small, highly organised group. How small? Well, we've no way of telling, have we? Oh, yes, we've ways of telling, but continue. Well, somebody is financing them. Yes, I accept that broadcasting involves expense, Mr Norman. Well, I take this matter more seriously than you seem to, if I may say so. You may say anything you like, as far as I'm concerned. But I beg you not to mistake my dilettante manner for amateurism. Mm. Well, we've got a dilemma. We can jam the broadcast before they've got to the second word, but then the commander couldn't use this triangulation system. Now, we can't admit the broadcasts happen. On the other hand, we can't allow sedition to be broadcast with impunity. So? Well, I'm only the secretary to the cabinet. I'm not a spy. Tim? Well, I know what worries me. As long as they're just um, broadcasting statements and asking questions, they're not really a threat. But this business of being late for work on Monday, that's really dangerous. Mm. You go on. Well, there are people who oppose us, I know that, but nobody has any idea of how strong the potential opposition is, not even the opposition. But if five million people, all with perfectly good excuses, are five minutes late for work on Monday, the opposition will suddenly realise, well, that it's a sizable section of the community. Even the majority. We have a job to do and we're doing it. The people know that. And, but if the opposition is, in fact, the majority? Well, it makes no difference to our responsibilities. Has Sir Michael any solution? Solution? No. All I have prepared is a few notes. Perhaps you could read them out. One. According to the triangulation, the broadcasts have been transmitted from positions in some two-thirds of the United Kingdom. We did know that. Two. There are certain areas from which no broadcast so far has been reported. For example, down here between Exeter, Dorchester and Taunton, nothing. Whereas over here and here and here, a mass of overlapping triangles. But from my experience, I would say that they don't overlap sufficiently closely for us to assume that the um, broadcast came from the same place. If they had, even allowing for the imperfections of the system, some of the triangles should virtually coincide. Three. Of the 117 transmissions so far, 98 have been over sound radio, 19 over television. Well, so what? Technically, it's just as easy to interrupt a television broadcast, assuming you only use sound, as it is a radio broadcast. But they're using radio's background music in factories. Not anymore. No, we've stopped it ever since the subversive messages. So why do they prefer using radio frequencies to television? 
four. The technique used by the Guardians is ineffective in that it misses the main point. But it was your bloody technique. Not exactly. For example, your control centre is informed after the broadcast. Immediately, within seconds. But they should be informed when the broadcast starts. Well, what difference does that make? Five. On six occasions, an observation post reported a broadcast at strength nine. On two occasions, it was reported as strength ten. In other words, the control post must have been within half a mile of where the transmission took place. Six. A special mobile force of guardians must be formed so that when an observation post reports a broadcast in its immediate vicinity, a search operation can be mounted within minutes before those involved in the broadcast can either leave the area or hide or destroy the equipment. That makes sense to me. But, but with all these broadcasts, how can anyone hope to be there in time? The larger the number of broadcasts, the greater the chance that one will happen near one of your posts. All your notes say now is seven demonstration. Ah, yes. Now, with the Prime Minister's permission, hmm? though I suspect he isn't quite sure of what I have in mind... No, I haven't the slightest idea. I've arranged a demonstration. I suspect that only he and I are old enough to have heard of Professor Chaleda. Huh? Well, I've only just heard of him. Though he is still the greatest authority in the world on sound. Could we have the first broadcast, please? I want you to tell me who this is. If our nation has no position at the head of the community of nations, we have no position at all. So who was that speaking? Well, that's me. I don't remember when I said it. Any other opinions? Well, we all know who it was, Sir Timothy. Splendid. Could we have the next broadcast, please? It gives me great personal pleasure to introduce the lovely and talented and, oh, oh, oh my, oh, my, ladies and gentlemen, the gorgeous... Donald! So who was that? Oh, I know that fellow. Uh, what's his name? He's on television. The impersonator, Harry Hopkirk. Absolutely right. Harry Hopkirk. Could we have the last broadcast, please? Now the way ahead is clear. Forget all that ever divided us. Now is the age of achievement. It's me again. My last speech. Are we all agreed? Now, I handed these recordings to Professor Chaleda. I won't go into the details, but he can convert a sound wave into a visual wave, if you like. I want you to watch the screen. On it you'll see three wavy lines. Each one represents the pattern of one of those recordings. I want you to tell me which two most resemble each other. Understand? Could we run the videotape, please? So, which two lines were most alike? It's obvious, the bottom two. The top one was quite different. Tim? Yes, yes, two at the bottom. It's so pleasing when an experiment goes as planned. The first recording you heard, the one about the community of nations, that was not the Prime Minister. Huh. It was Harry Hopkirk impersonating him. Well, he certainly has me taped. The two lines you thought looked similar, they were not Sir Timothy and Harry Hopkirk impersonating him. They were Harry Hopkirk doing his impersonation and Harry Hopkirk doing his introduction. In other words, you can fool the human ear, but you can't fool recordings of sound waves. Now, I have secured, with some difficulty, I might add, recordings of all broadcasts made by Quarmby up to midnight last night. In a large number, some attempt has been made by the broadcaster to disguise his voice, but as you've just seen, this does not fool Professor Chaleda's machines. Could we have the next sequence, please? This is Quarmby. This is Quarmby. Now, the Guardians, of course, have innumerable recordings of that, but the interesting fact that emerged from studying them is that, with one exception, which I shall come to later, there is only one voice saying, this is Quarmby. So what does all that mean? It's a recording used as a sort of signature tune. Hear this unmistakable voice, and you know you're listening to an authentic Quarmby broadcast. Now, I'll just run... Some of the th main voices used by the uh, Cornby speakers. Could we have the next up, please? Lies and betrayal. What happened to that promise? Five minutes late on Monday. Demand an answer. The next, please. But the price has not come down. In the 70s, we could still tell difference between the papers we read. Have an excuse ready. But before... And the next. The elections were rigged. 
demand that Hobson tells you the truth. Five minutes late. Listen out for Quarmby. I'd hold the others, please. So, basically, we are looking for, at any one time, probably two men. They will have with them a transistorized recorder. This is Quarmby. A microphone, which the professor assures me will have to be a little larger than the one that Commander Gibb is now wearing somewhere, recording what we're saying. And though the transmitter itself could be very small, they will need a power unit and a collapsible aerial, which together will probably need something like a medium-sized suitcase. Yes, but why couldn't all this be done by one man? In fact, it could. But I suspect they'll use a second man to keep watch. It's also less suspicious than if one man is seen to be talking to himself. Hmm. You say you can tell which man is making the broadcast? Yes. Yeah. Then why can't you tell where he's broadcasting from? We can. But they move. For example, the day before yesterday, the same man broadcast from somewhere in central London and later from the Manchester Stockport area. Ah. May I ask a question? Yes. How do they know when there's a gap so that they can transmit? Presumably because they carry a small transistor radio with them. But then virtually everybody does nowadays. Which explains why they prefer radio to television. Uh, sometimes from reports I get, they seem to have access to confidential information. Yes. Sometimes things which I didn't know about myself, like men being tortured to death in the Guardian headquarters. Quis custodiat ipsos custodes. Who will guard the Guardians? Now, I'll just finish my little demonstration. A broadcast done, you will notice, from information just received, and according to the professor, by someone who was not involved in any of the other broadcasts. In other words, not planned in advance, and done by whoever was available. Could you run the last broadcast, please? This is Quamby. This is Quamby. The G's are having a sweep, closing in on Portobello Road, London. Burn or hide anything incriminating. Do not offer resistance. So, from what you're saying, there's not many people in this Quamby thing. Not exactly. I'm saying there aren't many people involved in the broadcasts. But if you count the number of people who will be five minutes late to work on Monday... Look, the Guardians have done everything you've asked them to. Yes, yes, indeed. And yet you still have no idea how these people work. Not really, no. We have no clear line to work on. That may be the one helpful remark so far. I don't know what you're talking about. No. I want your mobile patrols of Guardians organised by tomorrow. They'll be on duty from, say, 6.30 in the morning until midnight. The moment you get a broadcast strength 9 or 10, ring me at this number, then I'll tell you what to do. And what happens between midnight and half past six? We all get a good night's sleep, like Quamby. They don't broadcast, then. I wonder if you tell my chauffeur I'm ready to leave. I'll be out in a minute or two. I just want a word with the Prime Minister, alone. Tim, if uh, everything hasn't changed since the revolution, uh, is there still some brandy where your predecessors kept it? <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Well, I'm fairly sure I know how the broadcasts are being made. You are? Yes. But are you sure you want them stopped? I don't quite Just see Just a what dilemma you... I've always faced. I happen to believe in a liberal society, with a small L, of course. So do I. Do you? Because a liberal society assumes the right of people, however misguided, and of course they must be misguided, to disagree with you. Yes, yes, but that's right. That's what I'm aiming for. A true freedom. A freedom where people are not conditioned by poverty and crime and, and pornography. I know. Where they... Please spare me the speech. Oh. But at the moment when the Daily Telegraph and the Daily Mail come out with virtually the same editorial on the same day, I suspect that influence is being brought to bear. Yes, that's true. But we are living in a transitional period. Of course. But aren't all periods transitional between one thing and another? It isn't my decision, it's yours. In the Quamby broadcasts, you have the authentic voice of an authentic opposition. All I'm asking is if you personally really want this country, for the first time since Magna Carta, to be without an articulate voice opposed to the government in power.
Good morning. Good morning. Anything so far? Three reminder broadcasts, I'm told. And those poor souls who start work at seven or whenever, most of them were five minutes late. The real test comes now at eight and nine for the middle classes, 9.30. Well, you must be expecting something, else you wouldn't have wanted me in so early. Else I wouldn't be up myself. No, obviously, if millions of people are going to be five minutes late, Quarmby will take every opportunity to tell the people that their protests work. Lots of chances to track them down. I was up till three. Why? Something you said. If you go over to your desk, you'll find a transparent map of Britain. And if you offer it up to the map on the wall, you'll find it's the same size. Hmm. What is it? It's a secret. If I'm wrong, I should hate you to know what it meant, let alone Gibb or Norman. No, just pin it up, and then we wait. As big as that? Right. And what are all those lines? Ah. Just sit down and finish your coffee. There's nothing we can do except wait. Here we go again. This is Quarmley. Today is protest day. Be five minutes late for work. Whatever your job, with an excuse. Strength 4093. Correction 094. To show you Correction 094. Whatever your job, be. F Tell me what it was I said. Hmm? What I said that gave you the idea. Don't worry, if I'm right, I'll see you get an OBE or something. How's the coffee coming along? It's starting to bubble. Good. It's 9.39. We should be getting something through. Yes. 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 I see, thank you. Well, our compatriots are being consistent. 70 to 85% late, they estimate. I simply don't understand it. No member of my government really wanted power. We simply felt we had a duty. Absolutely. Yet three quarters of the working population make this protest. Well, a lot of the delay may have been caused by comparatively few people. For example, the men who run the commuter trains. If a few of them arrive late, it affects the whole service. What you forget is that the majority of the population supports this government. And for the majority of those arriving late, it's... Well, it's one vast practical joke. You're fooling yourself, Norman. What are you doing? It doesn't take me until three to draw a map. I prepared these, too. What are those? Places where transmissions were logged nine and ten. So? The moment Quarmby gets proper reports of how many people arrived late, you'll start to boast. But that may take a little time. This coffee's cold. Another one. Is Quarmby. <clears throat> this is Quarmby. Strength two. Price now for Charlie. Yeah, no, no, work. strength He's one. Strength late. one. Bearing 229. Bearing 229. A weaker. No. No, it's not good. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, we lost it. The signal too weak. No good. Too far away, couldn't get a bearing. Couldn't hear it. Well, oh, someone would have heard it. Oh. Yeah, thank you. But according to Gibb, there have been three broadcasts since the work late started. We also have figures showing the numbers of workers late in each region of the country. They're only provisional, of course. What are they? Hmm? 
Well, uh, London and the South East about 82%, South West 79, Wales 74, Midlands 86, North 80, Ireland 67, Scotland 71. No, I don't think the variations have any significance. I do. People have memories. Where there used to be the highest unemployment, there they're most afraid of losing their jobs. It's only a quarter to twelve. Time for coffee. Damn nearly time for a potion. Days. You're sure? Yes, I've got it. Can therefore Strength ten. Triumphant proof yeah, definitely. Demands... They must be bloody well on top of it. The triangle of land bordered by the roads A303343 and B3084. Seal it off. Completely. Then get your chaps at Greatly off their backsides to search every blade of grass within a square mile. Operation up... Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I understand. Right, you lot, we're in business. Then alert Andover. I want armoured cars patrolling A303 and 343 until they link up with your roadblocks. Then close in across country and move. Oh, very odd. What? It was reported strength ten greatly. That's here, in the middle of nowhere. A place I'd have expected. I think it's time we joined Sir Timothy. Why? Two reasons. One, I have a sense of theatre. If I'm going to pull a rabbit out of a hat, I want an audience. Two, I don't think Tim Hobson really understands yet what's happening. He might need a friend. Perhaps your Sir Michael Dace isn't as efficient as you'd hoped. His full alert hasn't produced a thing. I want you to ring this number. I always thought the one intelligent thing your government had done... May I? Yes, yes, of course. It was to um, repair the damage that Beeching wrought and reopen the railways. Uh, Why, well, I was so grateful to my goddaughter here. And she said we needed a line to work on. We don't. But Quarmby does. Yeah. They've answered. Thank you. Good morning. Could I speak to whoever is the traffic controller of your western region? No, you may not have my name. All you need know is that I'm speaking from 10 Downing Street. Thank you. The triangulations made sense. All one had to do... Hello? Could you tell me, please, the 10 o'clock train from Exeter to Waterloo, was it delayed at any point? Then would you transfer me to someone a little more authoritative who does know these things? Thank you. See, if that train hadn't stopped for any reason... Ah, perhaps you can tell me. The 10 o'clock Exeter-Waterloo train, was it held up at any point? Look, this can hardly be an official secret. I see. Yes. But it's on time again now. Congratulations. It was held up momentarily outside greatly. And that was where the last... Signal failure, so they broadcast. Can you tell me where the 10 o'clock should be now? I was expecting the next transmission to be from Andover, the next stop. Huh? They'd prefer to wait until the train was stationary, less interference. But not if there were guardians milling about. It just stops at the Oval, Salisbury and Andover. Reaching Waterloo when? At 12.50. That's in eight minutes' time. Now, while you get Gibb and tell him to let no one off that train at Waterloo until his guardians have searched it, and I mean searched it properly, I will break the habit of a fifth of a lifetime. Is that you, Gibb? It's, would you get him immediately, please? Still not too late, you know. Too late for what? To cancel the order. 
It's your decision. Have I still any choice left? About anything? One so out of touch. Yes. If I could just talk to them. Not at them, to them. I've always wanted to explain. To tell people that there were lots of things that we had to do which I personally didn't want to, but it just seemed necessary at the time if I could just talk to them. I think the time for talking may be past. Women, fight back. Refuse to be pushed around. The time for the city is now. Do you want slavery or do you want freedom? Freedom! Freedom! It's <sighs> that. The bloody idiots didn't have the sense to take them alive. Is that all you can say? You kill them. All of you. Oh, yes, Sir Timothy. All of you. This is Kwame. This is Kwame. The voice of Britain will not be silenced. Final reports show that an average of 80% obeyed Quarmby's arrive late to work instructions. The Guardians must go.